Coming up this half hour, a close look at CARES Act funding, how some of the money is being used. One great false woman is helping the homeless while bringing in big bucks for the community. I'm Keely Van Mittendorp and I'll have that story next. And later, the Bakken Blues. We check in on the once booming oil patch. Montana This Morning starts now. This is Montana This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday to you. Yeah, finally made it. A little mm -hmm. tired, but we made it. We'll get a little there. tired. We're almost I blame there. Grant. Grant, yeah, <laughs> weatherman Grant, you know, in the evening shows yeah, came over last, well, yeah. yesterday afternoon. Yeah. And anytime Grant and I get talking, well, you we know. Talk for a long time. Well, yeah. it didn't help, too. There's storms rolling through, so we were right. nerding out about those. They were out nerding about those, out about the know? storms, yes. Well, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice, especially at the new house. We got a sick view, you yeah. know, of those storms coming in. It's a good view of the storms, in. right? Mm -hmm. so yep. They were storm Selling watching point. together. They, Forget they about the city view. It's more or less the... Storm, storm view. view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's there you right. Go. <laughs> All right, on the weather scene, we are starting off a little bit cooler compared to where we were yesterday due to that cold front that dropped through about 14 degrees cooler than what we were 24 hours ago along uh, the high line there in the north central and about 11 degrees cooler in Great Falls. Actual air temperature again, we're sitting at about 58 degrees in Great Falls, 57 in the capital. We are seeing some showers kick up in southwestern Montana, and those are going to likely kind of track toward Lewistown here as the morning and afternoon plays out. We'll talk more about that in main weather fishing forecast a little bit breezy today, cooler this weekend, and then we're going to bump those temperatures back up this next week as high pressure rebuilds. So with that said, you had like a hiccup there yes. or something. I don't know what was you going okay? on. All right, weather <laughs> headlines, uh, pretty average day temperature wise on tap. We do have a heightened fire danger though in north central Montana. And then again, uh, cooler this weekend, but high pressure next week is really going to bump those temperatures to the next level. Well, more on your detailed forecast coming up very shortly. Shannon. Jason, thank you. Time now is 501 and so far the state has decided where two thirds of the $1.25 billion they've received from CARES Act funding will go. MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison takes a closer look at the status and intended purpose of that money. Governor Bullock said Wednesday his administration has allocated $822 million of Montana's Federal CARES Act money to mitigate impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. But only about $160 million of that money has actually been distributed. The governor said two reasons for this gap is because the state is awaiting more information from 900 grant applicants and has had to weed out another 750 duplicate applications. Department of Commerce moved quickly through thousands of applications while still maintaining strong verifications and internal controls, and is completely caught up with the de deluge of applications. So where's the money going? About $300 million is for local governments to cover COVID-19 related costs, but only 32 million is out the door so far. Yet the Bullock administration said that money is meant for the entire year and is being distributed in stages. Another $125 million is set aside for loan deferments for businesses hit by the pandemic. There's also $75 million for schools to help them with reopening costs, $75 million for state government, and $40 million for mental health and substance abuse programs. These totals don't include $61 million in business stabilization grants that have already been handed out to thousands of small businesses. Republican Senate Majority Leader Fred Thomas of Stevensville says he's not impressed. He says the Bullock administration has had this money since April and should have distributed four to five hundred million by now. As he put it, this money is not for Christmas. It's meant for the current right now economy. Yet Bullock says the money is meant to last for the entire year and he wants the state to be able to respond to needs as they arise. Because we know that things have rapidly changed uh, throughout the pandemic and it's clear that the virus is still presenting significant challenges to our health and safety as well as our economic stability. We have to ensure that we have the resources to weather the next six months. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The death toll from COVID-19 in Montana has now reached 45 as Canyon Creek Memory Care in Billings reports another death on their Facebook page after Yellowstone County health officials said a man in his 70s passed away at the long term care facility on Tuesday. Since the facility outbreak was announced on July 6, 15 residents have died. The state of Montana reported 97 new cases of coronavirus since Wednesday. The number of Montanans who have recovered has increased to 1,782.
The FDA is warning about some 75 potentially dangerous hand sanitizers on its growing recall list. The agency says it's seeing more products falsely labeled to contain ethanol, also known as ethyl alcohol, but they've tested positive for methanol or wood alcohol. Methanol can be toxic when absorbed through the skin and may be life-threatening if ingested. One Great Falls organization has been feeding the hungry while this pandemic continues, but that's not all they're doing. MTN's Keely Van Mittendorp has more. Water, like chicken? chicken, yes. Homeless residents in Great Falls say they have someone watching over them. She is an angel. She doesn't have to do this for us. Carly Tuss is the director of homeless services at St. Vincent de Paul's Angel Center. Thank you and God bless Carly. Since the start of the pandemic, she's found a new way to feed the hungry in Great Falls by serving lunches each week in the same parking lot. We always have fruit. We always have uh, sandwiches. We always have sweets. No sweets. No sweets. No sweets. All right, there you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. They're absolutely gracious, appreciative, um, share their stories. We have to eat, you know, no matter what. Carly's a good woman. Tuss says this simple act of providing lunch not only gives people a free meal, it also brings valuable dollars into the community. Volunteers have registered over 100 people for the census through the food truck. Did she help you sign up for the census? Yes. Tuss says she's seen new faces who have signed up for the 2020 census. By being out here, it's expanded my ability to get people counted. She yeah, believes federal true. funding gained through their efforts helps programs that get homeless and at-risk individuals back on their feet. Thank you, Ms. Carly. But a fresh start first begins with mercy and a meal. Ms. Carly is the one that, that feeds us. She does all the work for us. Love her like my mother. In Great Falls, Keely Van Middendorp, MTN News. The Blackfeet Nation is working to fight hunger on their reservation. Food groups met and developed food resources for those in need. They brought together several different organizations with a similar goal. Those organizations include the Fast Blackfeet Food Pantry, Blackfeet Food Distribution Program, Pekini Lodge Health Institute. Daniel Antelope with the Food Pantry says it's a critical time to help those who need the food. Right now during COVID, we have so many kids that are home and then those parents are having to cover all the meals every day, all day. Um, so we understand that the that food is a real need right now. And um, living in a food desert where food costs more, um, you're less likely to buy the healthy foods. So through our Oyo Food Pantry, we provide foods from the food group so that we can um, help with balanced meals in uh, the homes that come to our food pantry. And they're asking families to reach out if they need help for those times and dates. You can check out our website for more details. The battle over coronavirus benefits continues. Democrats want to continue the $600 a week unemployment checks. Republicans want to give Americans more incentive to work. I'm Laura Podesta and I'll break down the arguments happening on Capitol Hill. And on the weather scene, we are seeing an increase in uh, stock prices, hopefully today with any luck, right? Fire weather warning in north central Montana there. And again, we're going to continue to see pretty strong wind in that region, humidity levels dropping, and again, temperatures on the rise. More on your forecast is coming up shortly. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. We're glad to have you along on this Friday. Happy Friday to you. A live look over the capital city as we're kicking off this July 24th. Well, the battle over coronavirus benefits continues. Republicans want to give Americans an incentive to work, while Democrats want to give generous funds. CBS News' Laura Podesta breaks down the arguments from Capitol Hill. Coronavirus unemployment benefits are about to expire, leaving millions of Americans without the $600 weekly check they've come to rely on to get through the crisis. I don't understand how they see people 
um, continuing to live at all or like continuing to be financially healthy without this assistance. House Democrats voted two months ago to continue the payment into January 2021. But many Republicans say that would discourage people from returning to the workforce, especially in states where that money is higher than one would normally make on minimum wage. We can't give people a disincentive to go back to work. We'll never recover from this if we're all at home watching Netflix. Financial experts say the checks, which are currently going out to roughly 31.8 million people, are essential to keep the U.S. economy afloat because as long as people have money, they'll continue to spend it where they live. If we cut that off, we risk the unemployment going higher, small businesses getting hit harder. Senators say they're considering all the options, including a short-term extension of the $600 or reducing it to a lower amount and offering that until the new year. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin proposed giving jobless workers 70% of their former wages. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Well, Wall Street lost ground on Thursday. The Dow dropped 353 points. The Nasdaq fell 244. The S&P 500 was down 40. It's been a rough sledding in the oil patch these days. A triple whammy of sorts has turned the once booming Bakken into the Bakken blues. MTN's Jay Cohn shows us how far the Bakken has bottomed out. 10,000 layoffs and more on the way. Oil production off 30% just April to May. The number of active oil rigs down 82% since January. Just some of the details in the July report from the North Dakota Department of Mineral Resources. The startling numbers come at a time when the region's oil industry is reeling. First, the pandemic crushing the worldwide demand for oil, not to mention an international price war in oil. And now a string of legal setbacks that have delayed and threatened to shut down two major oil pipelines. It adds up to a really bad case of the Bakken blues. First jobs, 10,250 layoffs as of mid-July, an estimated 20% of the state's oil and gas sector. Thousands more jobs are at risk as the Paycheck Protection Program expires. Active drilling rigs are hard to come by. Only 10 working the entire state of North Dakota this month. The nationwide rig count falling for 19 straight weeks. And North Dakota's oil production now at its lowest level since 2013. In May, 858,000 barrels per day was produced. Compare that to 1.2 million a day in April. As the industry awaits federal court rulings regarding both the Dakota Access Pipeline and the long-delayed Keystone XL, Experts expect a sudden surge of oil moving again by truck and rail. The Dakota Access Pipeline took 500,000 barrels a day out of the Bakken. That means 900 additional tanker cars on the rails each day. And that heightens concerns over public safety. Alan Olson with the Montana Petroleum Association says without those pipelines, Montana and North Dakota oil producers face a significant hike in transportation costs, as much as $15 a barrel economics that simply don't add up for oil ventures here. Olson says the big concern industry-wide is the rise in COVID-19 cases. As the cases go up, the demand for oil goes down. It's that simple. And recalling oil's big downturn in the mid-80s, Olson told me it took the industry 20 years to recover. With that in mind, he said, we've got a long road ahead of us. In Billings, I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. Well, on the weather scene here, taking a look back yesterday, some pretty crazy storms rolling throughout central Montana. We did peg out at 87. I was kind of sweating bullets there for a while with all those clouds. I didn't know if it was going to warm up, but it did. As for today, going to be sitting a little bit cooler, 77 by the noon hour there. As for the capital, 81 was the daytime high yesterday, quite a bit uh, below that average temperature of 88. Today around the noon hour, hitting about 76 with the high 70s and 80s. Your forecast is next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Well, a little bit cooler this morning compared to where we were yesterday at this hour. 58 degrees in Great Falls, 57 in the capital. A couple of showers kind of kicking off there into southwestern Montana. They're going to continue to make their way pretty much from the capital toward Lewistown up into northeastern Montana as the day plays out here. We do have a heightened fire danger, though, in north central Montana. There was a watch yesterday that has been escalated to a fire weather warning into north central Montana, Glacier, Liberty, Pond Array, and Toole County until 9 p.m. tonight. Most 
mostly due to a little bit of an increase in wind in that area and very low humidity levels. So not a ton of wind today, but we will see slightly gusty conditions at times throughout the day on average about 10 to 20 miles per hour. But again, you know, your usual suspects there right along the Rocky Mountain front is where we'll see some stronger wind. Hence why we do have that fire weather warning 85 for your daytime high today. 85 in the capital as well, holding tight to a couple of 90s there throughout the eastern plains. So yesterday's cold front still kind of exiting the region here today. We are going to see again, like I pointed out, some of those showers kicking up into south center, uh, southwestern Montana, continuing into south central Montana. Pretty much everything staying south of Great Falls here today. Maybe one little splash and dash shower making its uh, way through the area. Really, Lewistown is going to kind of catch the brunt of it. And then we're going to start to have another cold front knocking at our doorstep early Saturday morning. That's going to put overnight lows a little bit more mild this evening and a little bit uh, below seasonable averages. 52 in Great Falls, 54 in the capital, looking at a couple of mid to low 60s throughout the eastern plains, so a little bit more mild there. That colder air is going to continue to filter in on Saturday. That could keep us a little bit breezy at times, and you really notice on the temperature contour I put behind the map, it just pushes that hot air right on out. Really the only storm potential I think I swallowed a bug or something, Shannon. <coughs> As, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I like swallowed weird. Anyways, down in south central Montana, that's going to be about the only area that sees a couple of those storms kick up. The biggest impact on Saturday, again, maybe a little bit breezy, slightly cooler air settling in across the state. That was weird. I like breathed in and like, ha. Oh. I probably anyways, 81 degrees in Gray Falls, 81 for your high tomorrow. So again, quite a bit cooler throughout the state following the passage of that cold front by Sunday. We're going to keep those temperatures a little bit warmer. We're going to start to see some pretty healthy high pressure rebuild across the state, and that's going to push temperatures well into the 90s again next week. So on Sunday, our last weather maker is going to continue to jog out to the east. Strong ridge of high pressure is going to build in right now. It really looks to kind of just camp out over top of the state and uh, that's going to keep us pretty dry and hot, especially through Tuesday, Wednesday. A little bit of moisture picking up there Wednesday uh, or Tuesday night into Wednesday, but I think for the most part, we're going to stay relatively dry. Here's how all of that comes together over the next couple of days. 85 today in Gray Falls, then again, a little bit cooler this weekend, but ramping those temperatures right back up next week, well into the 90s. As for the capital, 85 degrees, a little bit cooler this weekend, plenty of sun staying dry and then hot again next week, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. We do have a programming note this morning for viewers who watch us on Dish Network. Our parent company, Scripps and Dish, are in contract negotiations. This station could go dark for Dish customers today if they don't reach an agreement by the contract deadline. Since launching its first television station in 1947, Scripps has never before experienced a station blackout with any cable or satellite operator. In a statement, Scripps said, quote, after five months of negotiating with Dish and multiple contract extensions, Scripps and Dish Network may be reaching an impasse. We hope Dish will understand the need for Scripps viewers to receive its local television stations, giving our pressing news in communities right now, including a global pandemic, discussions around social unrest and active political year, as well as severe weather season. This dispute is about the distribution of our broadcast signals so we can keep our local audiences safe and informed, end quote. If you can't access KRTV or KXLH tonight on Dish, you can go to our website for more information. Well, still to come here on Montana this morning, a way to stay cool and relax this summer, thanks to an elephant. Stay with us. Think TN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Good morning, happy Friday to you, welcome back. I want to be doing that right now. Yeah. Time now is 525. This is an Asian elephant named Colonel. It was caught napping in the pool by his trainer, Christine, in the Fort Worth Zoo in Texas back on July 11th. And there he goes. Nose out of the <laughs> water. The video Better captured yeah, yeah. by his trainer there shows the very <laughs> relaxed Colonel napping and then, of course, raising his trunk out of the water. As you just saw, the trainer says the Colonel was pretty hesitant about getting in the water just a few months ago, but she worked with him and now, obviously, I uh, can't keep him out of the water. This kind of looks like Look your it. dog Hunter when he's rolling around when he was on That's his back accurate. a second ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Colonel is one of actually seven Asian elephants at the Fort Worth Zoo. He's 29 years old and about 9,500 pounds. That's so funny, Aww. though. Like, you, if you wouldn't know better, you'd be like, is he drowning? Right. Like, you are, know, like, is he okay? Hello there, there? Colonel? And then Hello? his trunk just goes just, up. You yeah. Know? 
It's like, oh, oh, <laughs> time, 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 time now to breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, what do they, what do they have? The, the submarines, you know, the little. Uh, oh yeah, the things that go little, up. And, I forget what they call. There's a yeah. name for them. Or that's kind of what, what it looks, it looks like. like. Little, yeah, this little trunk there. Yeah. That seems like a good idea, though. This last week, especially when it was yeah, hot, no I could have gone for just like you know laying in a little pool, taking a nap. Yeah, next thing you know, Shan's gonna be in like a kiddie pool out back. Just yep. Half snorkel. Out. Yeah, <laughs> snorkel. Yeah, exactly right. Then That's you don't my even trunk. have to lay out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, well, we're idea, definitely going to have some weather. Uh, this weekend, a eh, little bit cooler, okay. but then next week we're getting just sweltering again. So on the weather scene here, uh, waking up to 60 degrees already in Great Falls. Not terrible there. Uh, I feel like it was cooler than that just a few minutes ago. Anyway, shouldn't be warming warm up that up. quickly. I have to double check that. I never quite trust that temperature gauge. Anyway. Uh, 58 degrees in the capital right now. Little tiny bit of breeze out of the west at about three miles per hour. Okay, fire variable, something to keep an eye on here. Temperature a factor today and wind gusts a factor. Humidity levels not bad. And again, with all that rain that came through here, um, overall vegetation not too bad. Fire weather warning in effect for north central Montana here today as we are tracking pretty dry conditions. So cut bank, as for your fire variables today, we are going to see those temperatures increase. Of course, humidity levels dropping down there and uh, kind of gusty winds. So what that tells us if a uh, fire was to light in that area, it's going to spread pretty darn rapidly. So just kind of keep uh, keep in mind out there. 85 degrees in Great Falls. Same story for the capital here today. Cut bank uh, looking at 81, mostly sunny with some wind up there and some stronger storms possible in Glasgow today. Well, the USDA is making it easier to buy meat directly from a farmer and human rights groups say much of our clothing is made using slave labor. And yeah, Jane King is in New York with those stories and more. Activist groups say that top global fashion brands have profited from forced Uyghur label, labor. That is more than 180 human rights groups have alleged this, seen in a letter by Ben uh, Business Insider. Now, roughly one in five cotton products sold around the world come from the Uyghur heartland in China. They are a Muslim minority in that country. Companies tainted by forced labor include, according to the groups, Gap, Adidas, H&M, and Calvin Klein. Well, if you want to buy meat directly from a farm or ranch, the USDA says it can help. The USDA and its partners plan to offer this important and growing consumer segment of the food industry to the public. Farmers and ranchers then could soon be expanding their capacity to process live animals more locally and sell directly to consumers. Well, oil prices fell 2% as investors worried that the U.S. Congress may not agree on a stimulus package. And as jobless numbers rose, analysts prepared to cut energy demand forecasts as the number of coronavirus cases continues to climb. And Chevron is installing solar panels to produce oil more cheaply. According to Bloomberg, renewable energy costs have fallen substantially over time, making its application to oil fields more economic. Chevron hopes to replicate the green energy to produce Produce oil model and other places. From New York, I'm Jane King with your Ag and Energy Report. I'm coming up this half hour. First hand account. A Montana tells us what it was like to fight COVID 19. Plus, Big Sky Battleground Montana is seeing some big ad buys for the latest in this November race. And later, From flag MTN fundraiser. News. We look this at one man's Montana effort to keep Old Glory flying. We'll have that story coming up. Hello oh, there. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Yeah, was, <laughs> I wasn't Friday. sure what was going on there. Yeah, yeah. we're Computer, glad to have you with Computers this. got a mind of its own. It's Friday. Yeah, it happens. That's what it happens. happens. But uh, it's the storms. We'll blame the storms yesterday. I had some yeah. decent ones roll through yeah, the area. Yeah, it was kind of... It poured, at least. I know. I'm very bit. distraught about that for the simple fact because of, like, you remember my... Uh, Thunderstorm concerns, the threat right. forecast yes. or whatever. I had yeah. it pretty low on flooding. I didn't think we were going to get those like real. I thought it was mm -hmm. going to be a little bit drier, right? Yeah. You know, and we ended up not getting quite the hail out of it in a lot okay. of areas compared to what I was expecting. So you're so. distraught because you weren't Call the exactly thunderstorms. Accurate. Had those perfect timing, everything, okay. but they they acted a little different. Okay. Yeah. Well, good job on the timing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I do yeah. what I can. I was half right. <laughs> Kind of. Well, it's pretty good, I guess, in the weather scene. Well, for you know, weather, I suppose, yeah. 58 <laughs> degrees right now in Great Falls. As you notice, we are seeing a couple of showers there into southwestern Montana make their way into uh, uh, the Lewistown region here later in the day. Currently in Great Falls, so again, downtown, we're sitting at 60 degrees right now, looking at a dew point temperature of about 51 degrees, some wind out of the southwest. As for the capital, looking at about 58 degrees right now, dew point temperature at 53, so a little bit of a humid start today 
on the Opportunity Bank iCam. As for Fort Benton, uh, pretty calm morning right at 59 here today and uh, again 54 degrees for your dew point temperature, so a little bit humid. And a quick check of that UV index here today. We are looking at a UV index of about 8. So burn time just under 25 minutes. We'll take a look at a couple passing storms today. Nothing too crazy and a mild weekend on tap. More on that coming up shortly. Shannon. Jason, thank you. The death toll from COVID-19 in Montana has now reached 45 as Canyon Creek Memory Care in Billings reported another death after Yellowstone County Health officials said a man in his 70s passed away at that long term care facility on Tuesday. Since the facility outbreak was announced on July 6th, 15 residents have died. The state of Montana reported 97 new cases of coronavirus since Wednesday. The number of Montanans who have recovered has also increased to 1,782. And new this morning, we're hearing from one of those Montanans who's recovered. MTN's Jessica Nelson sat down with one young woman who not only tested positive, but also had severe symptoms and says there's a stigma surrounding the virus that she wishes wasn't there. OK, we'll hope to get you that story here in just a couple of minutes, but we move on now to the Cascade County Health Department adopting Governor Bullock's mask mandate. This means the government, uh, the department rather, will now be responsible for countywide mask enforcement as well as call centers role for reports of noncompliance. The mask mandate requires state coverings in all counties with four or more active cases of COVID to slow the spread of the virus. We spoke with health officer Trish Gardner, who hopes this mask mandate will show people the seriousness of the virus. As I've said before, this is one of those real simple things that everybody can do. And I hope that everyone takes, you know, sees the seriousness of this virus um, and plays their part in being able to help keep our community safe and healthy. Lewis and Clark Public Health has exceeded their capacity with investigation and contact tracing of COVID patients, and they're now relying on surge staffing for assistance. There are a total of four nurses regularly employed by the health department there. Due to the increase of cases in Lewis and Clark County, they've had to recruit other nurses on temporary employment to meet the need. There are 68 active COVID cases in Lewis and Clark County more than half of which were attributed to community spread. Health officers there say that the public health needs help and they're asking for the community to show personal responsibility and vigilance following guidelines. They also say that recent cases in the county have a lot of contacts with other individuals. Well, could Montana become a so-called battleground state in the presidential contest this year between President Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden? A new anti-Trump super PAC thinks maybe and has brought TV time, uh, bought TV time in Missoula for its new ad. The group is called My Deuce Touch and it has chosen Texas and Montana as the site of its most recent ad buys. The 32nd ad uses some of the president's words laid over other video and says he is, quote, Quote, too weak to lead the nation. The PAC was established by three brothers from New York and has raised about $300,000 so far, primarily from smaller donors. Still, it's a small player in the Super PAC game, which has many multi-million dollar participants. The PAC says it chose Montana because recent polls showed Biden within single digits of Trump, who won Montana by 20 points in 2016 over Hillary Clinton. President Trump's re-election campaign has also been running ads on Montana TV, going after Biden. Time now is 536 on your Friday coming up on Montana this morning. It's a team effort to keep the flags from the elements. That story is next. And later in your weather forecast, couldn't ask for a nicer couple of days to head out fishing if you want. A new uh, fishing forecast here for you. This is Missouri River near Cascades. Sunny skies, a little bit windy at times. Cubic feet per second sitting at about 55, 40. Height is uh, just over 7 feet there. We're looking at the low 80s in this region. Couple spotty storms as well. More on your forecast is coming up. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. Thanks for starting off your Friday with us here on Montana This Morning. It is now 539 as you're looking live over Great Falls. 
Welcome back. We're going to get to that story now that we were talking about just a few moments ago. Where we're hearing from one of the Montanans who has recovered from coronavirus. MTN's Jessica Nelson sat down with the young woman who not only tested positive, but also had severe symptoms. It was, it was puzzling for me to um, to tell people, you know, oh, I tested positive and rather than the response being, oh my goodness, like, how are you feeling? Are you okay? As opposed to, no, they're just, they're just more worried about, oh, well, where did you get it? What were you doing when you did it? Like, what were you doing? Because obviously you were somewhere you shouldn't have been. Katie said there was no way for her to know where, when, or even how she got the coronavirus. We're past that point in the level of community spread we're at now where I don't really think it's a matter of pointing fingers and it was just really kind of disheartening to see how many people were more worried about like who who can I blame for this? But she did get it. She described the impact on her body and concerns about the lasting effects. I was super, super tired. The chest pressure just started intensifying a lot. Feverish, body aches, um, headaches. The headache lasted for the longest. I still get intermittent headaches, but um, definitely just uh, very feverish, uh, chills. But I'm more, more so worried about the long-term effects from this because I, it's been three weeks and I still get winded walking up and down stairs and doing very simple everyday tasks. Katie wanted to share her story with me because she wants people to know with this disease comes a lot of uncertainty and she's urging others to take steps to protect themselves. Masks, masks, masks. I know people are so sick of hearing about it, but um, I wish I had been more diligent about it beforehand and I wasn't, I was just, I had the mindset of, you know, I'm young, I'm 23, I'm not going to get it. I just wasn't being as careful as I should have been. In Helena, Jessica Nelson, MTN News. Well, the Lodge Senior Living Center in Great Falls hosted a free drive through hot dog lunch for police and firefighters. The promotion called Guns and Hoses was a company-wide event from Mosaic Management, which owns the Lodge and several properties in Oregon. Executive Director Roy Garcia says his team handed nearly 85 meals out and called it a success. I did not anticipate so many people showing up considering that um, really just in the last two weeks was when we started getting out there and notifying our first responders, um, our police departments, fire departments. So I am happy that it turned out the way that it did. Showing them that they're appreciated. They're, they work very hard, long hours. Um, they get to go home probably sometimes and then have to leave 10 minutes later for an emergency. So I think that showing them how much they are appreciated throughout the senior living communities and in the industry as a whole is what's most important. Independence Day has, of course, come and gone, but the spirit of patriotism hasn't left Great Falls. One veteran is smiling proudly after countless hours spent fundraising for the flags of the Highland Cemetery. Last year, Jim Porter actually approached us, and at the time, he was looking for flagpoles. So we partnered with Shields, and we did a big raffle at our March banquet, and last year, we donated 1500 to the flag pulls. So this year he approached us asking if we would help to buy flags for the for the cemetery here. And they did help. The Great Falls Safari Club International Chapter donated $1,500 to the cause, enough money for Jim Porter to purchase flags three times over. That will allow him to change them out when they suffer regular wear and tear due to harsh wind. Porter has wanted to restore the flags at Highland Cemetery for years out of respect for the men and women whose service uh, who laid their lives on the line and died defending the flag. Porter says seeing the new flags flying after years of campaigning was well worth the effort. I'm very, very proud of, of all of the work and all of the people that donated. And I know I can speak for the veterans that are buried here and the families of the veterans that are buried here when I say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And if you're interested in joining SCI or donating to help keep the cemetery flags flying in the future, you can find more information on our website.
a day out there today. We are going to be tracking a couple of spotty showers throughout the area. Nothing too crazy though. Temperature wise looking at 64 degrees by 8 a.m. this morning, looking at the high 70s, couple of 80s and mostly sunny skies here this afternoon. A lot less in the way of moisture today compared to yesterday. Partly cloudy skies to start things off in the capital mid 70s around the noon hour and hitting the 80s this afternoon. Cooler weekend on tap. We'll tell you why that is going to be the case coming up after the break. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully your Friday's off to a great start. A little bit cooler as we head toward the weekend. 58 degrees in Great Falls right now. 57 in the capital. A couple of light little showers over southwestern Montana. We'll see some of those splash and dash showers kind of tracking through central Montana, making their way into northeastern Montana as the day plays out. Quite a different story, though, in north central Montana. More wind, low humidity levels, and pretty hot weather in this region. That's why we do have a fire weather warning that has been bumped up from a watch in Glacier Liberty, Pond Array, and Toole counties in that particular region, and that's going to take us through the remainder of the day Friday. So what that tells us is if a fire was to spark, it could spread pretty darn rapidly for us. Wind, nothing too crazy, but just enough to kind of raise that fire concern a little bit. On average through central Montana, it's going to be a little bit gusty at times today. Nothing too crazy, but your usual suspects there into the Rocky Mountain front in north central Montana and along the High Line. Quite a bit more wind in that particular region. 85 degrees for your daytime high today 85 in the capital still hanging on to a couple of 90s throughout the eastern plains overall today the cold front that settled in yesterday helped to kick off some of those storms that's going to make its way out of the region but you'll notice still a little bit of remaining moisture kicking up into southwestern montana continuing to track into central montana lewistown should kind of catch the brunt of it and really even when i say the brunt of it most of which are just going to be splash and dash showers maybe an occasional thunderstorm or two this afternoon those storms will continue to move into northeastern Montana and then some cooler air kind of settling in overnight. We'll tell you about that momentarily. 52 degrees for your overnight low in Great Falls, so a little bit chillier this evening. 54 in the capital, still hanging tight though to the mid 50s and uh, even a couple of mid 60s in northeastern Montana for overnight lows. On Saturday, for the most part, we're going to stay relatively dry, but cold front is going to drop into the state. I put that temperature contour behind the map so you can see that cold front just kind of moving that hot air on its way. Really for the most part, the only storm potential is going to be down into south central Montana. Biggest impacts here a little bit breezy on Saturday at times and then again cooler temperatures as that cold front kind of settles into the state. So you'll notice that's going to back us off to the low 80s for a good chunk of central Montana. A couple of 80s continuing into the eastern plains a little bit warmer in that particular region and then highs on Sunday. We're going to start to wind those temperatures back up as another ridge of high pressure builds across the state. Here's what it's going to look like for us. Huge ridge is going to move in. It's almost a carbon copy of what we saw this last week. Ridge is going to build first part of the week. That's going to push temperatures back into the 90s again next week, and it's pretty much just going to hang tight for us as we head through the remainder of next week. So 85 degrees today, a little bit cooler through the weekend as that cold front settles in. Then that huge ridge of high pressure is going to rebuild. That's going to take temperatures back into the 90s as we head into next week. As for the capital today, 85 degrees, 81 on Saturday. A couple more clouds, maybe an occasional splash and dash shower, but for the most part dry. And then 90s again next week, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. Time now is 550. And for our viewers that watch us on Dish Network, we do have a programming note for you. Our parent company, Scripps and Dish, are right now in contract negotiations. This station may go dark for Dish customers today if they don't reach an agreement by the contract deadline. Since launching its first TV station back in 1947, Scripps has never before experienced a station blackout with any cable or satellite operator. In a statement, Scripps said, quote, after five months of negotiating with Dish and multiple contract extensions, Scripps and Dish Network may be reaching an impasse. We hope Dish will understand the need for Scripps viewers to receive its local television stations, given the pressing news in our community communities right now, including a global pandemic, discussions around social unrest and active political year and severe weather season. This dispute is about the distribution of our broadcast signal so we can keep our local audiences safe and informed, end quote. Now, if you can't access KRTV or KXLH tonight on DISH, you can head to our website for more information. Well, still to come here on Montana this morning, it's twins. We'll have some more cute baby animal video for you next. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. 
Welcome back. Thanks for spending your Friday morning with us. Time now 554, just uh, about seven minutes away there from, uh, you know, six minutes away. Jeez, did the math six wrong. Minutes. Six minutes away from six o'clock. Changed on me. I can't think this early. Uh, <laughs> well, an endangered ring-tailed lemur has given birth to twins at the San Diego Zoo. Look at them. They're so <laughs> cute and tiny. Oh my they look gosh. like they have little masks on. Yeah, they do. Look at that. Aww. <laughs> uh, Siblings. Look at the little ears. They're all yeah. pointy. Okay, so veterinarians have checked out the two little lemurs and a wildlife care specialist say their mother is performing all the appropriate behaviors for a mama lemur. The twins were born on July 8th. They spend most of their time clinging to their mom. Yeah, after several months, the mom will encourage them to play on their own. Well, that's no fun. There are more <laughs> than 100 species of lemurs, all native to the island of Madagascar and all considered threatened or endangered. The ring-tailed lemur is among the most popular and easily recognized by its big ears, woolly fur and long tail and of course white ringed, uh, long and white ringed, black ringed tail, whatever. Their tail. Mm -hmm. Their tail. Yep. yep. Uh, <laughs> lemurs are considered endangered because of the loss of habitat and of course the illegal pet trade. Oh, well, these I mean, are so it cute. would be cool to have one as a pet. I'm not advocating for that. <laughs> Just because they look cool. I can't imagine actually having to take care of one, though. Yeah. That'd be a job. That would be a job. <gasps> but they're yeah. super cool to look mm -hmm. at. They're, well, and I've, I don't think I've ever seen, like, the real tiny babies either. No, I haven't. Yeah. They're cute. It's always neat yeah. when they have the little babies But like I that. understand what the mama wants to, you're like, okay. Just be like, all right, time to go. Learned. Go play You've, on your own. Give yeah. mama some time on herself. <laughs> You've yourself. sucked up enough of my life. Go go on. <laughs> be free. They're be cute, free. <laughs> I love that the zoos are doing this where they're sharing more of these yeah, the videos of the right. babies and all that. Yeah. No, it's super cool. I'm on board. Yeah. Well, on the weather scene, <laughs> as you're heading out the door here bright and early this morning, uh, mostly sunny skies. They'll continue to clear out here as the day plays out. 60 degrees right now in Great Falls. A little bit more wind today consistently. I mean, we, you know, obviously got gusty when that uh, front came through, but on average, we'll see about uh, 10 to 20 mile per hour wind gusts here today uh, throughout central Montana. A few more clouds in the capital, 58 degrees right now. We'll likely see some rain this morning here. Uh, might be raining right now, it looks like here in the capital. And uh, so far, wind is pretty darn calm for us. All right, allergy forecast, couple of changes here. Grass is oh. ramping up to the next level, yeah. Wow. Trees kind of down a little bit, uh, especially the cotton, all that rain is kind of you know, knocked it out of the air yeah. at least for a little while. Mold low and ragweed has kind of dropped there a little bit as well, okay. Another uh, fishing slash boating forecast here for you. Holter Lake today, sunny skies, wind out of the south, 7 to 15 miles per hour. Some storms uh, late into the afternoon and evening. Just kind of keep an eye to the sky there. Overall, here's what you're looking at today. 85 in Great Falls in the capital, 91 in Glasgow and Cut Bank looking at 81. Don't go away. Your Farmer Ranch Report with the Montana Ag Network is next. Coming up this half hour, a close look at CARES Act funding, how some of the money is being used. Plus, cleanup efforts are underway to keep a Helena area free of clutter. And coming up later, the Bakken Blues. We check in on the once booming oil patch. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We're glad to have you along on this Friday. I'm working on it. Jason's off yeah, doing we whatever. We just put like batteries normal. in, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a different. This is a different remote. Excuse oh, us while well, we're it's figuring out too. some behind the scenes things here. Shocker. It's Friday morning. We're excited yeah. to have you with us. Just the prompter mm -hmm. control. I mean, it's only kind of necessary to do a news broadcast yeah. unless you want to read off of a paper the whole time. But you know, it's fine. Or paper the iPad. Is an iPad. Yeah. I was That's gonna okay. say, you know, paper's Make much more work. reliable than the iPad. It's too. true. It's yeah. true. With technology comes more. Luke yeah, potentials. Very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. Well, uh, on the weather scene here, <laughs> tracking a little bit cooler, a couple of days here for you. Looking at uh, temperature change, this uh, about 11 degrees cooler at this hour compared to where we were 24 hours ago. 12 degrees cooler in the capital as well, and about 14 degrees cooler in Cut Bank. That puts an actual air temperature at 55 in Cut Bank, 58 degrees in Great Falls, and 57 in the capital. As we look downtown, a little bit different temperature there. Not much though, about 60 degrees on the camera right now at the U.S. Bank. I 
Cam dew point sitting at about 52 as for the capital 58 degrees right now. Calm wind looking at a little bit of rain in the area as some kind of splash and dash showers are going to make their way through the region. 62 in geyser right now as always beautiful sunrise there from that camera. Sneak peek into your weekend here Saturday looking at the low 80s, so a little bit cooler with the passage of a cold front breezy at times and then on Sunday we're going to warm back up to the mid 80s and a hot work week ahead. Tell you a little bit more about that extended forecast very shortly Shannon. Jason, thank you. So far, the state has decided where two thirds of the $1.25 billion they've received from CARES Act funding will go. MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison takes a closer look at the status and intended purpose of that money. Governor Bullock said Wednesday his administration has allocated $822 million of Montana's federal CARES Act money to mitigate impacts of the coronavirus pandemic but only about 160 million of that money has actually been distributed. The governor said two reasons for this gap is because the state is awaiting more information from 900 grant applicants and has had to weed out another 750 duplicate applications. Department of Commerce moved quickly through thousands of applications while still maintaining strong verifications and internal controls and is completely caught up with the de deluge of applications. So where's the money going? About $300 million is for local governments to cover COVID-19 related costs, but only $32 million is out the door so far. Yet the Bullock administration said that money is meant for the entire year and is being distributed in stages. Another $125 million is set aside for loan deferments for businesses hit by the pandemic. There's also $75 million for schools to help them with reopening costs, $75 million for state government, and $40 million for mental health and substance abuse programs. These totals don't include $61 million in business stabilization grants that have already been handed out to thousands of small businesses. Republican Senate Majority Leader Fred Thomas of Stevensville says he's not impressed. He says the Bullock administration has had this money since April and should have distributed four to $500 million by now. As he put it, this money is not for Christmas. It's meant for the current right now economy. Yet Bullock says the money is meant to last for the entire year, and he wants the state to be able to respond to needs as they arise. Because we know that things have rapidly changed uh, throughout the pandemic, and it's clear that the virus is still presenting significant challenges to our health and safety, as well as our economic stability. We have to ensure that we have the resources to weather the next six months. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The death toll from COVID-19 in Montana has reached 45 as Canyon Creek Memory Care in Billings reported another death after Yellowstone County health officials said a man in his 70s passed away at the long-term care facility on Tuesday. They've had 15 deaths at that facility since July 6th. The state of Montana reported 97 new COVID cases since Wednesday, and the number of people who have recovered has increased to 1,782. An update this morning from the CM Russell Museum. The joint show they were hoping to hold in September at the Expo Park won't happen as planned. But don't worry, the Russell sale will still be holding an auction on September 12th. It'll be using online platforms, though. There will also be telephone and absentee bidding options. Well, last chance, Audubon helped spruce up Nature Park in Helena. Volunteers of the nonprofit environmental group gathered for a day of cleaning at the park. They collected nearly 200 pounds of trash. Between this cleanup and one last month, the group has removed close to 700 pounds of garbage and waste from the park. Last Chance Audubon partnered with the city of Helena to deliver the trash by dropping it off at near a trail for the city to come and pick up the same day. Organizers say this opportunity to clean up the waterways is the, a way that the park can benefit. It makes us feel real good and we as birders are out here a lot and so we don't have to look at that trash. It makes us feel better when we're out here in a more pristine nature environment. The group also bagged almost 300 pounds of trash from the ponds. The battle over coronavirus benefits continues. Democrats want to continue the $600 a week unemployment checks. Republicans want to give Americans more incentive to work. I'm Laura Podesta and I'll break down the arguments happening on Capitol Hill. And later in your weather forecast, we're tracking a little bit of a cooler day as we head toward the weekend. High 80s for a 
Four Peck region right now into northeastern Montana. We'll see some wind there and a good chance of some afternoon storms, so you'll want to keep an eye to the sky. More on your detailed forecast is coming up. We are from MTN News. You're watching Montana this morning. Thanks for making us part of your Friday morning. We're glad to have you along. It is July 24th. Time now is 6 11. The battle over coronavirus benefits continues. Republicans want to give Americans an incentive to work. Democrats want to give generous funds. CBS News' Laura Podesta breaks down the arguments from Capitol Hill. Coronavirus unemployment benefits are about to expire, leaving millions of Americans without the $600 weekly check they've come to rely on to get through the crisis. I don't understand how they see people um, continuing to live at all or like continuing to be financially healthy without this assistance. House Democrats voted two months ago to continue the payment into January 2021. But many Republicans say that would discourage people from returning to the workforce, especially in states where that money is higher than one would normally make on minimum wage. We can't give people a disincentive to go back to work. We'll never recover from this if we're all at home watching Netflix. Financial experts say the checks, which are currently going out to roughly 31.8 million people, are essential to keep the U.S. economy afloat. Because as long as people have money, they'll continue to spend it where they live. If we cut that off, we risk the unemployment going higher, small businesses getting hit harder. Senators say they're considering all the options, including a short-term extension of the $600 or reducing it to a lower amount and offering that until the new year. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin proposed giving jobless workers 70% of their former wages. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Well, it's been a rough sledding in the oil patch these days. A triple whammy of sorts has turned the once booming Bakken into the Bakken Blues. MTN's Jay Cohn shows us how far the Bakken has bottomed out. 10,000 layoffs and more on the way. Oil production off 30% just April to May. The number of active oil rigs down 82% since January. Just some of the details in the July report from the North Dakota Department of Mineral Resources. The startling numbers come at a time when the region's oil industry is reeling. First, the pandemic crushing the worldwide demand for oil, not to mention an international price war in oil. And now a string of legal setbacks that have delayed and threatened to shut down two major oil pipelines. It adds up to a really bad case of the Bakken Blues. First jobs, 10,250 layoffs as of mid-July an estimated 20% of the state's oil and gas sector. Thousands more jobs are at risk as the Paycheck Protection Program expires. Active drilling rigs are hard to come by, only 10 working the entire state of North Dakota this month, the nationwide rig count falling for 19 straight weeks. And North Dakota's oil production now at its lowest level since 2013. In May, 858,000 barrels per day was produced, Compare that to 1.2 million a day in April. As the industry awaits federal court rulings regarding both the Dakota Access Pipeline and the long-delayed Keystone XL, experts expect a sudden surge of oil moving again by truck and rail. The Dakota Access Pipeline took 500,000 barrels a day out of the Bakken. That means 900 additional tanker cars on the rails each day. And that heightens concerns over public safety. Alan Olson with the Montana Petroleum Association says without those pipelines, Montana and North Dakota oil producers face a significant hike in transportation costs, as much as $15 a barrel, economics that simply don't add up for oil ventures here. Olson says the big concern industry-wide is the rise in COVID-19 cases. As the cases go up, the demand for oil goes down. It's that simple. And recalling oil's big downturn in the mid-80s, Olson told me it took the industry 20 years to recover. With that in mind, he said, we've got a long road ahead of us. In Billings, I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. Well, up next to your weather forecast, we are still tracking a couple of fire variables today, despite the rain that moved through yesterday. Temperature being one of them, still in the mid 80s for a good chunk of the state. Humidity levels not bad today, right around 25%. Going to be a little bit gusty today in the terms of wind, and uh, so far the fuel not doing too bad. Vegetation staying rather good for us. Cut bank, though, that area is under a high... Uh uh, high fire danger, of course, the fire weather warning in place there. 
We'll see hot temperatures and pretty low humidity levels. Your forecast is coming up next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Finally, uh, looking at the weekend just around the corner. Pretty mild morning here. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Friday. 58 degrees in Great Falls, 57 in the capital, looking at a couple of low 60s. We'll see a couple of showers into south central and southwestern Montana today. I'll show you that momentarily. Fire weather still a bit of a concern despite the rain that moved through uh, north central Montana. There, Glacier, Liberty, Pond Ray, and Tool counties under a fire weather warning. Low humidity levels, gusty wind, and pretty hot temperatures as well. So if a fire does kick off in that region likely spread pretty rapidly. On average, a good chunk of central Montana today is going to be under wind gusts at about 10 to 20 miles per hour, though. Usual suspects right along the Rocky Mountain front there in the Browning Heart Butte area, a little bit stronger moving into Cut Bank as well there. So uh, those gusty winds really kind of playing into the fire danger. 85 for a daytime high today. Same story for the capital. A little bit cooler there still into southwestern Montana, northeastern Montana, though. Temperatures still well into the 90s today. Pretty toasty one there. So so yesterday's cold front still kind of tracking out of the region here this morning. Following that, a little bit of lingering moisture, still kicking up some showers. Southwestern Montana tracking toward Lewistown and into South Central and then making their way up into Glasgow. We should see some clearing skies though overnight. A little pocket of colder air is going to be moving in this weekend. I'll show you momentarily. 52 for your overnight low in Gray Falls, about 54 in the capital. Some lingering 60s into northeastern Montana there. Lewistown this evening at about 52. On Saturday, Saturday, a pretty mild day for the most part, maybe a little bit breezy at times, relatively dry for the most part. We are tracking a cold front, though. You'll notice that big warm air mass that's been planted over the state. That's going to be moved right on its way due to that cooler air settling in. That's going to hold temperatures back in the low 80s for the most part for a good chunk of the state on Saturday. So 81 in Great Falls, same story for the capital. Maybe a little bit warmer there throughout the eastern plains as that cold front kind of wedges in and moves that warmer air on its way by Sunday. We're going to start inching those temperatures back up, though, as a pretty healthy ridge of high pressure builds in. So our last weather maker, that's going to continue to jog out to the east. Pretty healthy ridge of high pressure, though, is going to build as we head into a new work week. That's going to stick with us pretty much all week. Right now, looks like those temperatures are going to, again, rebound back into the 90s across the board, especially uh, by Wednesday, Thursday. So here's how all of that's going to come together for us over the next couple of days. Today, looking at 85 degrees, sunny skies, looking at 81 then tomorrow, a little bit cooler with the passage of that cold front, then back to the 90s as we head into next week. Pretty dry forecast here, can't rule out a little spotty shower or two on Saturday with the passage of that cold front, primarily over the mountains though, and then 90s as we head into next week. As for Fort Benton today, 88 degrees, a little bit cooler this weekend, plenty of sunshine though, again, spotty shower not out of the question on Saturday, maybe Sunday, but for the most part, we're staying pretty darn dry. As for Cut Bank here today, again, pretty high fire danger in that area. Cooler though this weekend, back to the 90s next week, Shannon. Jason, thanks. It's 622 now, and for our viewers that watch us on Dish Network, we have a programming note for you. Our parent company, Scripps, and Dish are in contract negotiations. This station could go dark for Dish customers today if they don't reach an agreement by the contract deadline. Since launching its first TV station in 1947, Scripps has never before experienced a station blackout with any cable or satellite operator. In a statement, Scripps says, quote, after five months of negotiating with Dish and multiple contract extensions, Scripps and Dish Network may be reaching an impasse. We hope Dish will understand the need for Scripps viewers to receive its local television stations. Given the pressing news in our communities right now, including a global pandemic, discussions around social unrest, the active political year, and severe weather season. This dispute is about the distribution of our broadcast signal so we can keep our local audiences safe and informed. Now, if you can't access KRTV or KXLH tonight on Dish, you can head to our website for more information. Well, coming up on Montana this morning, we're celebrating your birthdays. Stay with us. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday to you. It's time to celebrate some birthdays. Yeah, birthdays. Uh, do we have any anniversaries? No anniversaries. Just birthdays, birthdays today. today. Okay, mm -hmm. kicking things off with Katrina Simmons. Happy birthday to you and Nolan Walter. That's happy 12th birthday from mom and dad, Mason, Lexus, and I uh, hope you have a great day there. 
Happy birthday to Michaela McCormick on Saturday. Happy birthday from Grandma and Grandpa. We also want to wish Robert Dottie a happy birthday coming up tomorrow. This is happy birthday, Bob. We love you, Odd and Zeus. Yeah, happy birthday to, uh, this is going to be on Saturday, to Brooke Acklestad. Happy 23rd birthday, Brooke. And uh, continuing with that, Sarah Murphy, birthday on Sunday. And the message says, wishing you a very happy birthday and thank you for being such a wonderful friend. Aw, and happy birthday to Alexander Easton on Sunday. That's love from mom. And you yeah. have a birthday to well, announce. Yeah, I sure do. That's big John Laird there. My dad, mm -hmm. happy birthday to him. He's and turning he's... like 35 now, I think, is what the going word on the street wow. is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you might know he's born born here in town, yeah. here in Great Falls. I think the police are still looking Gave for him. Gave the cops a run for his money, we hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, a little bit of the story behind my dad. Yeah. Uh, his dad, my grandpa, uh -huh. um, literally had a police scanner just so he knew where my, my dad was around town. So if you wonder so... where he gets it from, that's what, yeah. <laughs> Come by it honestly. Yeah. So yeah, big happy, happy uh, we'll, we'll call it 35th birthday to my dad. Wow. Uh, that's Closer on Sunday. Closer to age than your dad than you. That's kind of weird. Oh, that is weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll put 40, 40, 40. We'll yeah. come 40. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anywho. <laughs> All right. Getting you out the door here with a look at the weather forecast. Do keep in mind North Central Montana along the High Line for Glacier, Liberty, Pond Array, and Toole County. We do have a fire weather warning in effect there. That's going to take us through 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, very low humidity levels, gusty wind, hot temperatures, that sort of thing. 60 degrees right now in Great Falls. It will be a little bit breezier consistently today. U.S. Bank ICAM there. A couple of clouds and some spotty showers for the capital bright and early this morning. 58 degrees on the Opportunity Bank ICAM. And your fishing forecast over the next couple of days here today. For the most part, looking at the mid 80s across the region. A couple of Flash and dash showers in the area, most of which, which will stay south of Great Falls, more or less from the capital to Lewistown, then tracking into northeastern Montana. But for the most part, pretty uh, good forecast. Just a little bit cooler this weekend and then hot again next week. 85 in Great Falls, same story for the capital. Pretty toasty there in northeastern Montana at 91 and Cut Bank at 81 today. All right, don't go away. We're back in just a couple of minutes. Coming up this half hour, first hand account in Montana tells us what it was like to fight COVID-19. Plus, Big Sky Battleground, Montana is seeing some big ad buys. We'll have the latest in the race to November and later. One great false woman is helping the homeless while bringing in big bucks for the community. I'm Keely Van Mittendorp and I'll have that story next. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Hey, good morning to you. We made it to Friday. Yes, Happy finally Happy Friday there. to you. Yeah. Almost there. Almost Heading to into the weekend. the weekend, right? Yeah. Not a bad weekend forecast either. A little bit okay. cooler, so a nice break. You know, it was rather toasty was this week. toasty this week. We were week. out yeah. working in the shed, and uh, that... <laughs> No, there's like a window no air, in the shed, yeah, but, but still there's like very no little airflow. airflow, very stuffy, very it's like hot. a sauna in Oof, there. We were both yeah. just like drenched in sweat toasty. trying to get things hung up in yeah. there. But yeah. uh, anywho, so a little bit cooler this weekend, <laughs> yeah. still tracking a couple of little isolated storms throughout the area. But uh, overall, here's what we're looking at as you're heading out the door here this morning. A little bit cooler compared to yesterday, about 11 degrees cooler compared to 24 hours ago in Great Falls. Relatively the same in the capital, a little bit cooler there in the cut bank. So actual temperatures looking at 58 in Great Falls, 57 in the capital right now. And uh, today we will be a little bit breezier. Not bad, but more consistent bra uh, breeze today. As for the ICAM, uh, U.S. Bank ICAM, we're looking at uh, dew point temperature of about 52 degrees. Downtown right now, it's about 60 degrees right now. Wind out of the southwest at about 10 miles per hour. And we've already seen a couple of showers kind of dance around the capital right now on the Opportunity Bank ICAM. Dew point temperature there at 53. And Lewistown also looking at 53. Just starting to see a little bit of sun there on the horizon. Should be a nice day for you. Weather headlines, pretty average temperature wise as we head into the weekend, though. A cold front is going to keep us a little bit chillier this weekend and another high pressure ridge is going to get us really hot next week. We'll talk about that forecast shortly, Shannon. Jason, thank you. The death toll from COVID-19 in Montana has reached 45 as Canyon Creek Memory Care in Billings reported another death after Yellowstone County health officials said a man in his 70s passed away at the long-term care facility on Tuesday. The outbreak there started on July 6th and since then 15 residents have died. The state of Montana reported 97 new cases of COVID since Wednesday. 
the number of Montanans who have recovered has increased to 1,782. And new this morning, we're hearing from one of those Montanans who has recovered. MTN's Jessica Nelson sat down with the young woman who not only tested positive, but had severe symptoms and says there's a stigma surrounding the virus she wishes wasn't there. It was, it was puzzling for me to um, to tell people, you know, oh, I tested positive, and rather than the response being, oh my goodness, like how are you feeling? Are you okay? As opposed to, no, they're just they're just more worried about, oh well, where did you get it? What were you doing when you did it? Like, what were you doing? Because obviously you were somewhere you shouldn't have been. Katie said there was no way for her to know where, when, or even how she got the coronavirus. We're past that point in the level of community spread we're at now where I don't really think it's a matter of pointing fingers and it was just really kind of disheartening to see how many people were more worried about like who who can I blame for this? But she did get it. She described the impact on her body and concerns about the lasting effects. I was super, super tired. The chest pressure just started intensifying a lot. Feverish, body aches, um, headaches. The headache lasted for the longest. I still get intermittent headaches, but um, definitely just uh, very feverish, uh, chills. But I'm more, more so worried about the long-term effects from this because I, it's been three weeks and I still get winded walking up and down stairs and doing very simple everyday tasks. Katie wanted to share her story with me because she wants people to know with this disease comes a lot of uncertainty and she's urging others to take steps to protect themselves. Masks, masks, masks. I know people are so sick of hearing about it, but um, I wish I had been more diligent about it beforehand and I wasn't, I was just, I had the mindset of, you know, I'm young, I'm 23, I'm not going to get it. I just wasn't being as careful as I should have been. In Helena, Jessica Nelson, MTN News. The FDA has some new guidelines that could make opioid prescriptions a little bit safer. The agency is now asking doctors to talk about Narcan with patients that they write opioid scripts for. That's the overdose reversal drug. They want doctors to tell patients how they can get that drug or even prescribe it alongside the opioid for people with a history of addiction. Typically, pharmacists can sell Narcan without a prescription. Well, could Montana become a so-called battleground state in the presidential contest this year between President Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden? A new anti-Trump super PAC thinks maybe, and they've bought TV time in Missoula for a new ad. The group is called My Dust Touch, and it has chosen Texas and Montana as the site of its most recent ad buys. The 30-second ad uses some of the president's own words laid over other video and says he's, quote, too weak to lead the nation. The PAC was established by three brothers from New York and has raised about $300,000 so far, primarily from small donors. Still, it's a small player in the Super PAC game, which has as many as mul has many multi-million dollar participants. The PAC says it chose Montana because recent polls showed Biden within single digits of Trump, who won Montana by 20 points in 2016 over Hillary Clinton. President Trump's re-election campaign has also been running ads on Montana TV going after Biden. The Helena City Commission held a preliminary discussion Thursday before making a decision next week on the future of the school resource officer program. The commission has temporarily delayed almost $300,000 from the Helena Police Department budget while they consider whether to remove four armed officers from Helena Public Schools. This work session was the commission's first extensive discussion on the issue after they heard testimony at a meeting earlier this month. Commissioners Sean Logan and Emily Dean expressed concerns about the impact of ending the SRO program so close to the start of the school year. Commissioner Heather Lachlan, who has been one of the main advocates for ending the contract, said she still wants to move forward with removing the officers, but that she's willing to look at delaying the change to give the school district more time to implement a new plan. I certainly would would be open to a, a suggestion from the body on what what timing makes sense. Um, I continue to think that it would be important to say, you know, this existing structure will end at that date. I, I think when we move forward, like we can't afford not to get this right. We simply cannot afford not to. The commission is set to make a decision on the delayed funds during its regular meeting Monday night. 
One Great Falls organization is helping to feed the hungry while the pandemic continues. But as MTN's Keeley Van Mittendorp explains, that's not all they're doing. Water, like chicken? chicken, yes. Homeless residents in Great Falls say they have someone watching over them. She is an angel. She doesn't have to do this for us. Carly Tuss is the director of homeless services at St. Vincent de Paul's Angel Center. Thank you and God bless Carly. Since the start of the pandemic, she's found a new way to feed the hungry in Great Falls by serving lunches each week in the same parking lot. We always have fruit. We always have uh, sandwiches. We always have sweets. No sweets. No sweets. No sweets. All right, there you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. They're absolutely gracious, appreciative, um, share their stories. We have to eat, you know, no matter what. Carly's a good woman. Tuss says this simple act of providing lunch not only gives people a free meal, it also brings valuable dollars into the community. Volunteers have registered over 100 people for the census through the food truck. Did she help you sign up for the census? Yes. Tuss says she's seen new faces who have signed up for the 2020 census. By being out here, it's expanded my ability to get people counted. She yeah, believes right federal right. funding gained through their efforts helps programs that get homeless and at-risk individuals back on their feet. Thank you, Ms. Carly. But a fresh start first begins with mercy and a meal. Ms. Carly is the one that, that feeds us. She does all the work for us. Love her like my mother. In Great Falls, Keely Van Middendorp, MTN News. Time now is 641 and coming up on Montana this morning. The upcoming football season may not be what we're used to, but fans and reporters are still getting a media day. We'll check in on the Cats and Grizz next. And later in your weather forecast, some pretty favorable weather. If you wanted to get outside and do a little fishing or a little bit of boating, taking a look at the Missouri River near Cascade, sunny skies, cubic feet per second, are about 55, 40 height, uh, just over seven feet. there. looking at the low 80s today. A couple of spotty showers in the area. We'll break down that forecast very shortly. Welcome from MTN News. You're watching Montana this morning. Welcome back. A live look on this Friday over Great Falls. We're so glad to have you along. It's July 24th. Time now is 644. The future of college football season remains up in the air amidst COVID-19, but several leagues are still moving forward with media kickoff events. MTN's Tom Wiley has the latest on the Cats and Grizz in the Big Sky Conference. Thursday's Big Sky kickoff event started like normal, albeit virtually, with the unveiling of the preseason coaches and media polls. League coaches spent time talking about their teams, but eventually conversation shifted towards the elephant in the room, the effect that COVID-19 has had on programs and the uncertainty of the upcoming season. But I think this has been a huge challenge just in terms of keeping a, kind of that, that grasp of what your guys need at that moment when you're not around them. And our primary job is to make sure that we meet the basic needs of our student athletes, food, shelter, and safety. And, and we want to, uh, we want to do that. And it's way easier to do when we're around them and can connect with them. So uh, I think we've all gotten creative, but I think that's probably been the most challenging part of this time. What I have seen is the separation they've experienced over the last few months, particularly this spring has been disastrous for their mental health. It's just been awful for them. Uh, they're suffering mentally from it, and we need to get them back together. Both Jeff Choate and Bobby Houck have advocated for masks, and they both hope it can lead to an on-time start in the fall. The Cats and the Grizz want to play football. More importantly, they want a clear plan. We just got to quit zigzagging. Whatever it is, stick to it. Get on the railroad track and go. This is a real virus. It's an airborne deal. It's not going to be contained. People are going to get sick. We've got to do what we can to mitigate it. We've got to make a decision whether we're going to do this or not. Coronavirus isn't going anyplace and half measures don't work. So uh, my opinion is we either go or we don't go. We shut the country down and which I don't think is feasible financially, personally. And then uh, the other side of it is we go or we don't go. If you're uncomfortable, don't play, don't coach, don't go to the games. If you're comfortable, go, let's roll. Tom Wiley, MTN News. The Cats were picked to finish third and second respectively in both preseason polls. For more in depth on each team, you can visit montanasports.com.
Well, not your agricultural weather forecast, but we are going to talk about weather conditions throughout the area here. Looking at temperatures today, some of the fire uh, fire variables, especially in north central Montana. Temperatures a bit of a factor. Humidity levels not bad around the mid 20s here and a little bit gusty in the terms of winds. Your hour by hour forecast, especially in that cut bank region. Plenty of sun dry and again some wind kind of kicking up. As for Great Falls, we'll look at sunny skies. No rain for the most part. Capital could see a couple more showers. Your forecast is coming up. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Good morning, friends. Proud to have you along for the ride here on a Friday morning. A pretty mild start of the day. Not as hot as yesterday, though. 58 degrees in Great Falls, 57 in the capital. Uh, still looking at a couple of showers in southwestern Montana. They'll continue throughout the day, making their way to Lewistown, then jogging up to the north and the east. All right, increased fire danger. Fire weather warning into north central Montana for the high line there. We're looking at Glacier, Liberty, Ponderé, and Toole counties. Fire weather warning until 9. That tells us that uh, conditions are pretty favorable for a fire to spread rapidly if one one was to kick off and one of those favor or one of those elements I should say is going to be the wind. On average, we're looking at wind gusts. Not bad, about 10 to 20 miles per hour, but you factor in the low humidity and the hot temperatures, especially in that region. Of course, always going to see some stronger wind coming off of the Rocky Mountain front there. Uh, that's really going to help that fire variables uh, kind of bump up a couple of notches. So 85 degrees in Great Falls for your daytime high. Still a, a same story in the capital, looking at the low 90s in northeastern Montana. Yesterday's cold front that kicked off some of those storms is going to continue to move out out of the region. A little bit of remaining moisture there over south uh, western Montana. That's going to continue to make its way through south central Montana and kind of Lewistown catching the brunt of that today. Mostly just splash and dash showers. Not expected to be like long lived, any real heavy hitters, anything like that. And they'll continue to track toward northeastern Montana, keeping our eye on a little batch of colder air that's going to move in this weekend. Overnight lows, a little bit chilly, 52 for the season here, about 54 in the capital, looking at a few remaining 60s throughout the eastern plains. As for tomorrow on Saturday, another cold front is going to drop through the state. This one looks to be relatively dry. About the only area that should see a couple of showers is going to be south central Montana. But you'll notice that warmer air mass is going to move right on out with that cold front kind of invading. So that's going to back temperatures off quite a bit. Looking at the low 80s for daytime highs for a good chunk of central Montana, even about 77 in Cutbank. A couple of uh, 80s there throughout the eastern plains, but overall a much cooler weekend. We'll start to increase the temperatures a little bit as Sunday rolls rolls around mid 80s for the most part and a couple of temperatures starting to flirt with the 90s there again throughout the eastern plains, but they're going to continue to climb next week. The reason behind that another huge ridge of high pressure is going to build in. It's almost a carbon copy of what we saw this week. That ridge is going to kind of settle over Montana, allowing for those temperatures to get well into the 90s and really it's not going to go too terribly far. We're up to Wednesday now and still pretty much camped right over top of us and even on Thursday still Pretty healthy ridge, uh, not really going anywhere. Keeping an eye on an area of low pressure, but right now it looks like that ridge is pretty darn strong, not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So here's how all of that's going to come together over the next couple of days for us. Looking at 85 degrees today. Most of the showers should stay south of Great Falls. Cooler weekend with the passage of that cold front right back to the 90s, though, as we kick off a new work week. The capital today, mid 80s. Cooler might see a couple of showers with the passage of that cold front on Saturday. Sunday, looking at the mid 80s, back into the 90s next week. As for Fort Benton today, 88 degrees, 82 this weekend on Saturday. Again, maybe a little shower there, but pretty minimal chances. 90s next week. And to wrap things up here in Cut Bank, again, high fire danger today, 81, 77, then back to the 80s and 90s next week, Shannon. Jason, thank you. Wall Street lost ground on Thursday. The Dow dropped 353 points. The Nasdaq fell 244. The S&P 500 was down 40. For our viewers that watch us on Dish Network, we have a programming note for you this morning. Our parent company, Scripps and Dish, are in contract negotiations. This station may go dark for Dish customers today if they don't reach an agreement by the contract deadline. Since launching its first TV station in 1947, Scripps has never before experienced a station blackout with any cable or satellite operator. In a statement, Scripps says, quote, after five months of negotiating with DISH and multiple contract extensions, Scripps and DISH Network may be reaching an impasse. We hope DISH will understand the needs for Scripps viewers to receive its local television stations, given the pressing news in our communities right now, including a global pandemic, discussions around social unrest, the active political year, and severe weather season.
This dispute is about the distribution of our broadcast signal so we can keep our local audiences safe and informed, end quote. Now, if you can't access KRTV or KXLH tonight on DISH, head to our website for some more information. Coming up, as the U.S. hits 4 million COVID-19 cases, we'll show you what some individuals are doing to help. Plus, if you mail in your ballot, what are the odds your vote will count? We put the Postal Service to the test. Coming up on CBS This Morning. Welcome back. Let's get you out the door on this Friday with the day's top stories. It's July 24th, 2020. The death toll from COVID-19 in Montana has reached 45 as Canyon Creek Memory Care in Billings reported another death after Yellowstone County health officials said a man in his 70s passed away at the long-term care facility on Tuesday. Since the outbreak was first reported there on July 6th, 15 people have died. The state of Montana reported 97 new cases of COVID since Wednesday. The number of Montanans who have recovered has increased to 1,782. The Helena City Commission held a preliminary discussion on Thursday before a final decision next week on the future of the school resource officer program. The commission has temporarily delayed almost $300,000 from a Helena Police Department budget while they consider whether to remove four armed officers from the Helena Public Schools. Commissioner Sean Logan and Emily Dean expressed concerns about the impact of ending the SRO program so close to the start of the school year, while Commissioner Heather O'Loughlin, who's been one of the main advocates of ending the contract said she still wants to move forward with removing the officers. Well, we want to remind you as you're heading out this weekend, grab your favorite mug, take a picture for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself in Scotland, like that picture, like that picture snap yes. a mugshot, <laughs> send it to us on Facebook using hashtag mugshot Monday, put it right on our Facebook wall. That way we won't miss it. And of course, we'll hook you up with some uh, morning light coffee from morning light coffee roasters and mm -hmm. a KRTV mug. So get those in. We'll pick our favorite on Monday morning. All right. All right. More I'm creative, the better. See them. I know. Yeah, we've let's had some step good it up ones. a little bit. We've uh, we've had some good ones, but we've I want to see some really good ones. We've some had solid some cute mug shots. Animals, animals with their tongues out in the background <laughs> ones. So I like Looking those. Looking good. Mm -hmm. If you can get one with the sloth in Billings, <gasps> win, win. Ooh, automatic win. I don't yeah. even think he's not out yet, is he? No. Oh, okay. But well, he anyways. could hook it on his little two toes. <laughs> yeah. Hold the mug. That'd be good. Well, on the like weather that. scene, as you're heading out here, high fire danger in north central Montana along the high line. We do have a uh, fire weather warning in effect there. Glacier, Liberty, Pond, Ray, and Toole counties through today. Low humidity levels and pretty darn windy in that region. Holter Lake, if you wanted to head out boating here, sunny skies. Do keep an eye to the sky, though. Later this afternoon and evening, some storms possible there. And Ackley Lake looking at the low 80s on tap here today. And uh, a couple of storms possibly in that area as well. All right, over the next uh, couple hours here, we should be getting up to 85 degrees in Great Falls. Mostly sunny in the capital, 85. Pretty toasty there in northeastern Montana. Could see a couple stronger storms late into the day. A lot of them kicking up around the capital, rolling through Lewistown, continuing northeast toward Glasgow, most of which should miss out on Great Falls. Cut bank today, big concern there for, for fire danger, just low humidity, hot temperatures, and a uh, little bit of wind as well. And it is going to be a bit breezy throughout central Montana, but uh, nothing too crazy there. All right, well, we appreciate you joining us here on this Friday. Our news doesn't stop here. Get continuous coverage throughout the weekend online and social media. Yeah, have a great weekend. We'll see you back here Monday, everybody.